around for a ride in a 1960 Edsel. I'm getting an experience right this minute that not that many people actually ever had. Steve, it's, it's a delight to be in your part of town here, this beautiful golf course in the background, but more importantly in the background, there's a beautiful red convertible. Why don't you tell us what is that car back there? It's a 1960 Edsel Ranger convertible. Uh, one of 76 built. Okay. And uh, what range of years was the Edsel produced? Uh, they were built model years 1958, 1959, and 1960. Okay. Well, Ford was trying to compete with General Motors and have intermediate brands in between the Cadillac and the Chevy. Mm -hmm. So... Ford had the Mercury in between the Lincoln and the Ford, so they decided they needed another intermediate brand uh, to compete with, like Oldsmobile and Buick sure. in between. Mm -hmm. So that's where it started, but then they had a recession in 1958, and it kind of messed up their plans gotcha. well, to some degree. And there were 63,110 58s built. Um, something like 40,059s, I'm not sure the exact figure. Okay. And 2,846 60 Edsel. Okay. They right. were only built for two months in 1959 before they pulled the plug. Where does this car land in that 1960 model year? What's the serial number? How, how deep into production it's, is this? It's built nine days before production ceased. It okay. was built November 11th. 1959. Supposedly the last one built was November 19th, 1959. Bought the car in 2000. The car spent its whole life about 40 feet from Puget Sound, but it's absolutely rust free. That's amazing. Yeah, he was very meticulous. He was a, I believe he worked at Boeing. He was an aircraft engineer and was pretty meticulous about keeping, he never drove it in bad weather and he did a pretty good job of maintaining it. Right. So he had a log book with every time he bought gas. Okay. Yeah, he um, kept track of everything. Kept track of everything. <laughs> so how many miles are on it now? Uh, it shows 30,390, I think, right now. Okay. That's uh, the actual miles, and that's what was on the Washington title when I bought it. Sure. Um, and you're now the third owner, and you've had it 22 years yourself. Yeah, I've had it 22 years, and... A lot of it, it was disassembled while I did the restoration on it. But okay, the, that's my next question is, what was the condition you found it uh, in? It was actually an excellent, it was a okay. nice original car. It had been repainted by Mako back in 1974. He had the receipt. It was $125 paint job. <laughs> you know, it was starting to lose its pigment. It needed to be repainted. You know, it was just, it was kind of orange. The red pigment had faded. Okay. Even though it looked good. Uh, and I was driving it quite a bit, and I took it to a few shows, and the transmission started slipping. And so I parked it, and I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to things like that. You know, what started off as doing a paint job and rebuilding the tranny ended up, one thing led to another, and I ended up doing a full restoration on it, although it was not a frame-off restoration because the car was pretty much a mint original car, so I didn't see the point of taking it off the frame. Right. I did a high-end, you know, the paint job was far better than the factory ever would do. Sure. Um, right. Did the interior, uh, the reproduction interior. Uh, it's got a new top and mm -hmm. well, looks then great. while I was doing the transmission I decided that might as well go through the engine and while I had the engine and tranny out well then I put new old stock a a frames and ball joints and you sure, know right so it ended up taken me about 10 years to get the car finished okay I got but, it finished last year okay now speaking of engine and transmission what is the engine in it what is it's that? a 352 V8. Okay. Uh, it's in the, what they call a dual range automatic. It's actually just a cruise-o-matic, same okay. as a Ford cruise-o-matic. Uh -huh. 
And yep. cruisomatics, uh, and that's what the problem was with this transmission. They have a tendency to the cases crack on them, hmm. and then they slip. I so and that's what happened with this. The case had cracked. I had to go through five transmissions before I found a good case. Now, is this a pretty highly optioned car as far as the options? It in? has almost every option and accessory that you that they offered in 1960. Okay. Uh, it does not have a continental kit and uh, rocker molding. It had rocker moldings on it originally, and I can't stand them, so I took them off. Okay. Uh, I, I can't stand the continental kits on these 60s, so I would not put one of those on. Right. But, uh, it has pretty much everything else. It originally had power windows, power seat, power steering, power brakes. What about the air conditioning? Do you have air conditioning in here? It's factory air conditioning. Okay. Uh, and it's pretty much the same as a Ford unit, except for the under dash part is 60 ETO only, and they're okay. impossible to find. Right. So uh, can you highlight, I mean, if someone had an an old and Ed's obviously they're all old but if someone had one that needed a lot of work I, I guess it'd be pretty hard there's a lot of Edsel only parts on this car a 60 Edsel is one of the most difficult cars in the world to restore it's uh, very there's almost nothing reproduced that's Edsel only uh, even though it looks a lot like a 60 Ford there's a lot of at unique parts that are Edsel only. If if you, someone if you're going to kind of compare side by side, what are some things that would start popping out as being different when you see them next to each other? Well, obviously the hood's different. The grill, you know, the Edsel grill is much fancier. It's right. got it's made out of pop metal instead of aluminum. The Fords are all stamped aluminum. Okay. Uh, the fins on the back and the taillights, the bumpers are different. The side, the side trim on the sides is all unique to an Edsel. No kidding. Uh, there's a lot of trim on it that's Edsel only. Okay. And even the wheelbase is different? The frame has a 120-inch wheelbase where the Ford was 119. No kidding. And that's as a result of the rear spring shackles on an Etzel are different. Because of the extra weight for the fins and taillight housings, they have like a mercury shackle in the rear and it goes through the frame okay. uh, where a Ford does not. So it's hard Wait. to hard to fake a 60 Etzel accurately yeah. uh, because the frames are unique to Etzels. Sure. So obviously you've become quite a student of Edsel's as you've gone through this and owned this car. Yes. <laughs> but I don't think anyone would fool you with, with a, uh, a faked Edsel at this point. Um, and I guess um, as far as what you had to do to bring it to this level, because this is just an amazing, uh, it's hard to get the camera to, to bring it across how, how like new or nicer than new this car looks now in person. Um, what all did what were you able to keep that was original when you're going through it and try to make it such a nice car? Well, because it only had thirty thousand miles on it, the, a lot of the chrome is actually still original. It's perfect. Wow. Uh, the pieces that weren't perfect, I have been collecting Etzels for over fifty years and collecting sixty Etzel new old stock parts, and so I had accumulated a lot enough to do the car so wow what's not perfect original is nos nothing uh other than the bumpers and the window vent frames nothing's been re chromed on it wow uh, and i it's just me but i'm a firm believer that nothing trumps original chrome i mean you could have mm -hmm. the best chrome guy in the world re chrome it it does not look the same as an original nos piece yeah so wow. I kind of am a stickler in that regard, but yeah, t tell tell us a little bit about the interior and uh, what what's unique about specifically an Edsel interior. The yeah. whole interior is Edsel only. Uh, okay. The door panels, <clears throat> the seats, they're all unique to an Edsel. Okay. 
Uh, there's a company that reproduces the materials. Uh, then you have to have your own upholstery guy actually install everything. And uh, I had a really good upholstery guy here in Phoenix that mm -hmm. put the interior together for me. The dashes, uh, even though the sheet metal is the same as a Ford, the speedometer housing's unique to an Etzel. The knobs are all Etzel only. Wow. Even the radio, it's a Ford radio, but it's got Etzel background uh, oh, really? graphics on it. Wow. Uh, there's just so many things that are unique to an Etzel, and they're impossible to find. Like, most of these parts, you have to buy a whole car and, and sad to say, part out a... And I've parted out a lot of them. I've mm -hmm. owned 47 60 Etzels. So no way. Over 50 years of collecting. So I've, I've had I've had a lot of them. I've had to sacrifice quite a few of them in order to get, you know, the necessary parts. To I've owned two other uh, 60 convertibles that were major restoration projects. And, okay. You know, they were so rusty, and, and these cars had a tendency to rust, the trunks rust terribly bad because right. they have rubber trunk mats in them. Okay. Uh, is the one in this car, is that an original? It, it's all, this yeah. car is 100% a rust-free car. It's Wow. The underside of the car still has the green zinc primer from the factory. It's, it's one of the most perfect original cars in existence wow. underneath. Yeah, that's incredible. You know, uh, when I... Did the restoration? I did not remove the body off the chassis. I right. I did take the front clip off, pulled all the mechanical stuff out of it. And okay. Started basically from uh, bare frame rails in the front, and and uh, but I didn't take the body off because on a convertible, things change when you yeah. remove the body. It might it, not feel as tight when you put it back. It, things just don't go quite. Yeah. Like they did, you know. Leaving stuff original is sometimes better than restoring it. Sure. And then this car is a perfect example of, uh, you know, perfect original and yeah, sympathetic restoration, I guess you'd That's call a it. good, yeah, I like that phrase. Now, when we were looking at the firewall, we were noticing that the red on that firewall is still the original paint. It's the original paint. And the, kind of the, that black paint, that, that is a factory style uh, ship. It's shipped that way. Well, at the factory, they used a, an undercoating, like a tar-based okay. uh, insulating around the nuts and stuff on the firewall. I uh, see. It, it looks sloppy as hell, but that was all original. Yeah. So. Um, wow. That's incredible. It's the way it's supposed to be. It's, way it's, supposed to be and yeah. it's hard to duplicate. You know, you take the car apart and strip it and take it off the frame. You're never going to get it to look just. Right. Yeah, I, I can. You can come close, but nothing beats original. Fantastic. Like I said, like the old saying is, it's only original once. And right. Even though I repainted the car and done a lot to it, it, you know, I only pretty much did the stuff that needed to be done. On right. It. I had sold a race car, and so my wife and I, I, I told her that. I'm going to go buy me a nice red 60 Etzel convertible. So I went through the registry and okay. called everybody that owned a red 60 Etzel convertible oh, until know, I got down to the very end. And this <laughs> guy was the last red 60 own, owner. And, well, as a matter of fact, I am, he says, I'm 88 years old. I need to sell it. So No kidding. So my wife and I flew to Seattle and... Took the ferry to Vashon Island and, and wow. bought the car and drove it straight through from Seattle to Phoenix. Drove all night. You know, in fact, I woke up and it had a top was probably, uh, I think he put the top on when he had it painted in 1974. And so the top was not in real good shape. Yep. So my wife was driving. We were in California on I-5, and she was driving because I was taking a nap. Yeah. And I woke up, and I hear the car just screaming, and the top was billowing up, and 
looked over, she was doing 105 miles an hour <laughs> in the car, hunched over, giving her hell. <laughs> but we drove it all the way home, and uh, we got home. It needed needed some attention. The exhaust mufflers were blown out, and so it sounded like a stock car. Right. Uh, but we, some friends of mine, helped me, and uh, we put new exhaust on it and drove it to Las Vegas the next weekend no for, way. for an Etzel meet. And, wow. Uh, wow, you but, you christened it well when you first got it. That's great. Well, I'll say my wife Margie christened it well. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Oh man! Well, we're okay. I think we're gonna ask you to uh, see if we can take it for a ride and see if it runs as good as it as it looks. Well, it 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 runs pretty good, but I've only driven it about sixty miles since I finished the restoration, so I'm still I haven't had it aligned yet, so it kind of okay. wanders a little bit. But uh, it runs good. It's one of the few few old cars that I own that my wife actually approves of. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that sounds good to me. All right. Thank you so much, Steve. Sure. This is great. Either they're NOS with new old stock Ford ball joints, and mm -hmm. so okay. when I didn't actually take the body off the frame because it was so perfect underneath. You, you know? don't want to do that with a convertible if they don't need to be taken mm -hmm. off. It's just stupid. Well, it makes more work. Plus, it never never, it never looks quite the same. It's hard to get it to go back on correctly. Uh, a lot of sixty Etzels when they were storm. Every piece of sheet metal on a. 60 has a date on it so everything is stamped like this one is uh h is august of 1959 august 11th 1959. see people that uh use ford parts because they you know their stuff is rusted out they'll have 60 date codes on it and sure. you can tell it wasn't the original right but the, every piece of sheet metal on here is original and it's all date coded is right because uh are the bumpers new old stock no, they've been recurled. And how about the, the, the grill surround? What? The grill is either NOS or perfect original. When you recurl all this stuff, you lose all these little details. Sharp edges go away. Yeah, they just can't do them. Yeah, so you know, you've been 10 years putting all this especially stuff Especially these, you, you can't recurl them those. No, they, they just out. don't come out. Hmm. So, I forgot to so this the is black and the E on that one. Thing I gotta do. Oh, the fine details. Can we yeah. see in the trunk? Endless. Yeah. It's endless. And for the spare tires up in the front. Yeah, different sheet metal. It's a wholly different, whole different piece. Now these, these uh, exhaust tips, are those righteous or? Yeah, they're Ford accessory. They don't work, but they're an accessory. More mm -hmm. for looks than anything. Stop it, Steve. Huh. Cool. Here we are. Going for a ride in a 1960 Edsel. You know, there's so few of these Edsel convertibles made. You know, I feel like I'm. it's an honor. You know, I'm, I'm getting an experience right this minute that not that many people actually ever had. I mean, <laughs> how many people rode in a 1960 Edsel convertible? This is kind of cool. I got to say. So you mentioned earlier that uh, all these knobs are unique to Edsel. Yes. And that the t whole top the section. And the background of the radio. No kidding. All Edsel only. And of course, the 1960 was the only year uh, this dashboard would have been different in 59 or whatever. Yes. So um, one year only 
It's lonely. That's rare. <laughs> now tell me about this uh, this spotlight mirror combination. That seems that's obviously something we don't see today. It was an option. Okay, you've got yeah, and all, you've got a mount on both sides. <laughs> the mirrors don't actually work all that well because they're not yeah in very good position, but it's more of a visual. Yeah. Accessory, I think. I guess you could position them. I like them. If you need to, but. I like the styling on the spotlights. It looks really cool. Like it's got nice lines and just enough chrome to uh, help the lines along without taking away from them, I would say. Now, if it has a longer wheelbase, does that mean the back seat has more leg room? Is, is it the wheelbase changing no, the interior? No, it's just the springs and uh, okay. the body is the same. Okay. It's just the frame is different. So something like a, a carpet from a Ford would yes, carry over? Yes, okay. Yeah, yes, so there are a few <laughs> a few things that aren't Ed's lonely, but not the hard things. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so the convertible uh, top mechanism, I guess, was uh, That's the same as Ford. Same as Ford as well. Well, it's beautiful, man. Everything about this car, so nice. Are those vacuum wipers on the front? No, this car is electric. It has electric. Now, did they all come like that, or was that an option? No, or? it was an option. Okay. And of course, you have a generator light, which. That's alternators weren't everywhere yet. One thing they did away with, I wish they still had, was a knob to pull your floor vents, uh, like your foot well. Uh, well, yeah, it, left has, and right it has your knobs right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying I wish they oh, made those yeah, today. They, yeah. I'm kind of, you know, in new cars, I'm kind of jealous that we don't have that. It's a great feature. So, right, you have power steering and power brakes. Yep. Steering wheel's not aligned because I haven't had a car yeah. aligned yet. It's very annoying to me. I can't stand stuff that's not straight. <laughs> You're a little bit OCD kicking in, huh? Oh, I'm my own worst enemy. <laughs> oh, here we go. We've got some pickup. Is that a two barrel or a four barrel? Four barrel. Four barrel, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, it'll, it'll go when you want it to. But speed limit's only 25 yeah, years. <laughs> right. We're not trying to do a racetrack comparison, but he gave us a feel. A little bit of the sound. Beautiful. Well, Steve, if you've been dealing with Edsel's, Edsel's for decades, and uh, would you say this is kind of the nicest one you've had, or how does it rank? Oh, yeah, it's by far. It? <laughs> yeah. How are you get it? I have one one other Edsel. It's a Tudor hardtop. It's uh -huh. like, an Edsel, like a Starliner. Okay, right. But it's about halfway restored. It still needs a lot of work. I see. I don't know if I'm ever going to get get it finished. But I'm getting old. But, um, and that's also 1960. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it's a, a pilot car. It was when it's the first hardtop built. Wow. Well, that's fascinating. Uh, then the styling is, a, I guess, a little different than the convertible as far as how the uh, roof line and everything feels. Yeah, it's got the the uh, hardtop bubble top, it's kind right. of like a Chevy, but uh, you know they only made two hundred ninety-five of those, and they're very rare also sure now, even a starliner is a pretty car and uh getting the edsel version is an yeah. added bonus it's kind of like the convertible they made something like twenty five thousand ford starliners and right and uh 295 etzels right so yeah there's the difference right there there's a hundred of them for every etzel yeah out there. but um <laughs> now they're you know it is what it is. Yeah. That's very good. Thanks for taking me for a ride. Yeah, sure. That's really great.